I'm gonna go ahead and play some of this tape. This is my first run through of it. This was my first call to uh, internal affairs. I do have your report on it. Okay, uh, basically what I was calling about is when the officers came to my house, uh, I was very polite with them and I was trying to show them what I was doing, but they wouldn't look at my computer to so that I could show them what was going on, and they wouldn't let me get my phone or anything like that to show them. Um, and then I was being very cooperative, and I told them if they felt the need, I would go on on a different day, but I wasn't having a health crisis. What I was doing was advertising my Twitter mental health awareness, and they did not listen to me and wouldn't look at what I was doing. It's very hard to explain it over the phone. I just sent uh, the emails to um, your... Um, What's your name? Abba or something? Do you know what I'm talking about? I do not. Uh, I think she's in your records department. She's the one who gave me your number into the media department uh, on Facebook. With the posts explaining what I was doing, um, because they didn't listen to me and they wouldn't look at everything, they ended up, I asked, to, I said I was going to go to the bathroom and then they handcuffed me and took me out of the house. I had no idea any of this was going on. My dad had showed up at my house before that and he said he was coming to visit while he was waiting to pick up my mom. And they, when they entered my house, they entered my house. How I feel under a false premise, because they asked if it was my dad had been out front. I assumed it was broken into and I was like, yeah. Uh, when we, I turned around to get my dad and they came in my house without a warrant, which, I mean, I believe they need permission to come in. Um, so, basically I was defending myself without actually getting the details from them. I couldn't show them what I was doing on my phone or on my laptop because they wouldn't look at it and I didn't have my phone in my pocket. Then they took me out of my home without my keys, without my cell phone, without my wallet, um, again in handcuffs. Um, they, when they cuffed me, they put on my hands behind my back, which I know is how you do it, but the way they done it and how tight they were, I had to like flex my legs to keep the handcuffs from digging into my wrist while I was sitting in the seat. And again, the whole time, I, the reason I got off the couch is because I needed to go to the bathroom. I was taking a nap before my dad showed up at the house. So, like, the whole situation just escalated way too quickly, considering what they said they were there for, which was a mental health alert, uh, mental health check, which I talked to the uh, liaison at the place, and she reviewed the tapes, and she agreed with me that I was being cooperative and that wasn't necessary to take me out of my home. And again, uh, with uh, Facebook posts and things like that, I just sent over some emails. Do you want me to send them to you? Oh, if we need to, sir. Uh, I'm not sure our investment crew can look at whatever emails you'd like to provide. Yeah, we, uh, give me one second. I'm going to pull up my uh, ultimate viewer. You were, you were I appreciate you calling so late. I thought you guys would be close. I'm sorry, sir? I said I appreciate you calling so late. I thought you guys would be close. Oh, we're still open, sir. Okay, uh, let me uh, pull up, I just forward you what I forwarded now. It's a walkthrough of kind of what I was going to show them on my computer while they're at the house. Um, and they didn't. A lot of what I've been doing online is mental health awareness and social justice. And one of the big issues is that, um, these kinds of circumstances escalate too quickly uh, and they need to be dealt with properly. I know in like um, Oregon they have a special, like, I know you guys are overwhelmed because I talk to cops whenever I go out and I see them. And one guy was telling me how sad it was that everybody's having a mental breakdown during COVID and things like that, which is one of the things I've been working on on my website. I know in Oregon they have a company that does, eat, uh, I think, 50% of the police calls. Uh, they go out to de-escalate the situation, no cops, no me, no cops, and they just talk to the person. If there is an issue, then they try to get them to come in, and if not, then they call the cops. But they take care, uh, they said they do, you know, on a 
$2 million budget a year as opposed to something like $90 million the police department spends on the other 50% of the cases. I just thought that would be interesting for you. I mean, just in general, if you guys are interested in it for your department. I know I talked to the lady at the um, NetCare, which is the company that you guys used to do that. Thank you. 
doing or anything. It's just that they are charging me for it, and I think that they should be responsible. And we can process on the city of Columbus. It's the city of Columbus, not the police department, the city of Columbus prosecutor's office. And it is a claims, instructions, and information, and it gives you the contact information for the police department. It's Daniel Herbert and Tanya Bowles, but it gives their information there for you. To make sure you confirm that you have your correct information is Robert Lust, L-U-S-T. Your address uh -huh. is 1298 Studer Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43206. That's correct. Your uh, email lust.16 at gmail.com. Uh-huh. And I obviously have your phone number, the 740-258-4866. That's correct. Right. And what is your date of birth, sir? 41484. All right, in your race? I'm white. Right. Do you have something to write with there, sir? Um, can you email it to me? Sure, I'm just going to give you a complaint number. It's a very small number. Okay, give me a second. I'll pull this up. Okay, what's the number? Okay, your complaint number is going to be 2021-01-1026. Dash 1026. Dash 1026. Okay. Complaint number, a letter will be generated and sent to a residential address on Studer Avenue. And that letter will be the complaint number and the contact information of your assigned investigator who will follow up further with you in regards to the complaint process. Once the complaint is complete, it will be reduced to writing, sent to the officer's chain of command for formal determination if there's any misconduct, and you'll receive a written disposition of the outcome of that investigation. Okay. Uh, I appreciate it. And like I said, my main concern is that this type of thing doesn't happen in the future because it's a burden on society just in general. And, like, it's very frustrating, especially, like I said, can you guys come into a house without a warrant? Like... We go into houses all the time, sir. When we when we stop to speak with somebody, if a party inside the house wants us to come in, we come in there to talk to them. And so I don't know all the circumstances of your incident, but if your father or somebody else was there that invited the officers in, then they would not need a warrant uh, to make entry of any party that was there inside the residence that had access. Okay. I just turned around to talk to my dad. It's my home. He was visiting. I'm the only one who lived there. I said, hey, dad, and turned around, and they came in my home. Do they normally ask first before they walk through the door? Can I come in, or...? Yeah, they would normally ask to the party that they were talking to, and so if that was your father, then uh, they may have uh, spoken. Well, it was me, so um, unless he said something behind my back, I couldn't hear. But like I said, my main concern is that you don't do this to people in the future and that your officers, when they can go up for a mental health evaluation or a check, especially when someone's being completely cooperative, that you don't put them in handcuffs within seven minutes of walking in the door is kind of my issue. Does that make sense? All right, sir. Well, your, your circumstances certainly will be looked at. Again, you have the complaint number, and the investigator will be in contact with you. Okay, thanks, sir. All right. Bye -bye.